Good evening. Continuing on with our briefing today, 16 April 2017, on the case by the foreign fishing crew against the Sao Ouyang Corporation, the crew who worked on vessels Ouyang 70 and Ouyang 77, I would like to give you notice that we're applying for um, holiday page arrears on the 30th of October 2017 at the hearing at the Christchurch Employment Court. This is in relation to case number EMPC number 6-2017. Please take notice that on the 30th of October 2017 at 10am, Council will apply and make an application at the Employment Court at Christchurch that an order be made that the plaintiffs be paid their holiday pay entitlements and statutory holiday pay entitlements by the defendant, the Sao Corporation, pursuant to sections 15, 16, 18, 21, 24, 25, 46, 50, 61, 61, capital A, 63, 80, 82, 83, 84, 86, and any other applicable sections of the Holidays Act 2003, and under section 131 and section 161, round brackets 1, round brackets G, of the Employment Relations Act 2000, and any other applicable legislation and regulations. In addition, the plaintiffs will apply for an order that they be paid interest on the holiday pay, entitlement arrears and costs. In addition, the plaintiffs make an application to the court under section 219 of the Employment Relations Act 2000 for an order granting an extension of time permitting the applicants to, lob, to lodge this claim in the Employment Relations Authority and now in the Employment Relations Court. This is upon the grounds it's in the interest of justice to do so and appearing in the further grounds in the Memorandum of Counsel for the Plaintiffs and in the affidavits to be filed herein with the evidence to support the claim in the extension application. This application for holiday pay arrears and payment is made upon the following further grounds as follows. 1. Section 129, round brackets 1 of the Employment Relations Act 2000 states that a person who is a party to an employment agreement may pursue a dispute under the Act. 2. The defendant has disputed that this court, being the Employment Court of New Zealand, has jurisdiction to hear the plaintiff's claims under the Holidays Act 2003. We say that the court does have jurisdiction to hear the plaintiff's holiday claim claims because a. The plaintiffs are persons who are employees of the defendant who is their employer, by virtue of section 103 round brackets 5 of the Fisheries Act 1996, which provide minimum wage protections including the ability to claim holiday pay, so we say. B. The plaintiffs were party to an employment agreement, and C. The plaintiffs were also working for the defendants on New Zealand work permits, which meant the defendant had to comply with New Zealand employment laws. 4. The plaintiffs are entitled to pursue their disputes with their employer, the defendant and the Employment Relations Authority are now in the Employment Court where the proceedings have been removed to. Section 14, sec, sorry, section 143 round brackets E of the Employment Relations Act 2000 recognises that there will always be some cases that will require judicial intervention. This is such a case. The plaintiffs should not on public policy grounds be denied by their employer the right to pursue a claim or to seek to resolve an employment relations problem in the Employment Relations Authority or in the Employment Court, which this employer, the Sayoyan Corporation, has tried to do. The plaintiffs need and seek court intervention to resolve this employment relations problem and their employer about holiday pay entitlements and other short pay wage arrears entitlement claims and are legally entitled to lodge a claim in the authority and the employment court, so we claim. 7. This court has a jurisdiction, so we claim, to hear the plaintiff's claims, including those about their employment relationship problems, claims about holiday pay and statutory holiday pay, which I'm collectively calling holiday pay entitlements. 8. The plaintiffs are foreign fishermen who work for the defendant on New Zealand work permits issued by Immigration New Zealand under the authority and principle to recruit foreign fishing crew on the defendant's foreign vessels, the Ouyang 70 and the Ouyang 77 in New Zealand during the material times. A. The 2006 Code of Conduct for Foreign Fishing Crew at paragraph 30 says that employment crew agreements must contain and state Quotation, that the relevant New Zealand employment institutions under the Employment Relations Act 2000 shall have jurisdiction in relation to problems or disputes arising under employment agreements, end quote. B. 
B. It is an implied term of the plaintiff's employment agreement that the relevant New Zealand employment institutions would have jurisdiction. And C. The 2006 Code of Conduct for Foreign Fishing Crew at page 31 at paragraph 18, round brackets B, round brackets three little I's, close bracket, states that the employee or the employer may refer claims or problems to the Employment Relations Authority. 9. The plaintiffs worked in New Zealand during the material times. 10. New Zealand means the sovereign nation of New Zealand, including the land masses constituting the country of New Zealand and the territorial sea, as defined in the territorial sea, comma, contagious zone and exclusive economic zone act 1977. Around it, and together with any activities relating to New Zealand fisheries resources. 11. The plaintiffs were required to be on employment agreements that complied with New Zealand employment laws during the material times. This was required under section 103 of the Fisheries Act 1996. The authority and principle to recruit foreign fishing crew to work in New Zealand on these foreign fishing vessels. The work permits issued by New Zealand Immigration to the plaintiffs which require them to work exclusively for the defendant while in New Zealand and the 2006 Code of Conduct for Foreign Fishing Crew and also in relation to section 65 and section 66 of the Employment Relations Act 2000 which apply to this particular employment relationship we say. This included minimum pay entitlement protections under the Minimum Wages Act 1983, the Holidays Act 2003 and the 2006 Code of Conduct for Foreign Fishing Crew. 12. Accordingly the court has jurisdiction to hear the plaintiff's claims and should hear and determine their claims. 13. Section 2 of the Employment Relations Act 2000 sets out the objectives of the Act. This includes an acknowledgement at section 3 round brackets A round brackets little i's, two of them, close brackets of the Act, of the inherent and quality of power in the employment relationships. And section 3 round brackets little a little b close brackets of the Act states that the object of the Employment Relations Act 2000 is to promote the effective enforcement of employment standards. 14. Section 15 round brackets A of the Holidays Act 2003 states that the purpose of the subpart of that Act is to provide all employees with a minimum of four weeks annual leave to be paid at the time the holidays are taken. 15. The plaintiffs were employees of the defendant who was their employer and as New Zealand employment law applied, so we say the Holidays Act 2003 applied. 16. Section 15 round bracket C of the Holidays Act 2003 requires employers to pay employees at the end of their employment for annual holidays not taken and not paid out. 17. Section 16 round brackets 1 of the Holidays Act 2013 states that after the end of each completed 12 months of continuous employment, an employee is entitled to not less than four weeks paid annual leave. Holidays. 18. Section 16 round brackets 4 of the Holidays Act 2003 states that an employee's entitlement to annual holidays remains in force until the employee has taken all the entitlements as paid holidays or been paid out under section 28 round brackets B of the Holidays Act 2003 for the entitlement and the entitlement year. 19. Section 18 round brackets 1 of the Holidays Act 2003 an employer must allow an an employee to take annual holidays within 12 months after the date on which the employee's entitlement to holidays arose. Paragraph 20. Section 21 of the Holidays Act 2003 requires that holiday pay be calculated at a rate that is based on the greater of the employee's ordinary weekly pay as at the beginning of annual holidays or on the employee's average weekly earnings for the 12 months immediately before the end of the last pay period before the holiday. Paragraph 21. Section 24 and Section 25 of the Holidays Act 2003 sets out how to calculate holiday pay. Paragraph 22. Section 46 round brackets 1 and round brackets 2 of the Holidays Act 2003 state that an employee is entitled to public holidays and to payment for those holidays. Public holidays are in addition to annual holidays that an employee is entitled to under the Holidays Act 2003. Paragraph 23. Under section 
50 of the Holidays Act 2003, an employer must pay an employee at least time and a half for working on a public holiday. Paragraph 24. Holiday pay is accumulated from year to year and is not characterised by a use it or lose it rule. Paragraph 25. Accordingly, the six-year limitation of period imposed by Section 142 of the Limitations Act 2000 only commences in relation to holiday pay when the plaintiff's employment ended after they got off the vessel and went home to Indonesia. 26. The employment agreement contracts signed by the plaintiffs in Indonesia before they came to New Zealand to work for the defendant stated that the wage entitlements would be calculated and paid out within one month after arrival home to Indonesia at the end of the employment relationship. Paragraph 27. The plaintiffs signed their contracts in Indonesia with the defendant's Indonesian manning agents to work on the Oyang vessels in New Zealand prior to joining the Oyang vessels. The plaintiffs organised by the defendant's Indonesian manning agents obtain New Zealand work permits for the plaintiffs to work on the Oyang vessels. Those contracts were for two year periods for each plaintiff. 28. The plaintiffs were entitled to holidays and to be paid for holidays they never got. Paragraph 29. Once on the Oyang vessels in New Zealand, a. The plaintiffs were required to work seven days a week and were on call to work 24 hours a day for each day of their employment contract until they were sent home to Indonesia on either completing the terms of their contracts or resigning or being fired. b. The plaintiffs work seven days a week, 18 to 20 hour days. In addition, the plaintiffs were on call seven days a week, 24 hours a day, to work on demand during sleepovers on the vessels and had their sleep interrupted while on the vessels to go back to do fishing tasks for the defendant on these Oyang vessels. D. The plaintiffs worked every single public holiday during the period of their employment on the vessel and were not paid the applicable hourly rates for that service under the Holidays Act 2003. E. The end dates of employment were determined at the convenience of the employer. The plaintiffs had no say when their employment would end or even, even if they tried to resign, the dates were still determined by their employer. The defendant and its agents organised all the travel arrangements. The plaintiffs had no say in it. F. The plaintiffs were not permitted any holidays by the defendant and took no holidays or days off. Paragraph 30. The defendant, the Sale Oyang Corporation, through its lawyers, has disputed and denied that the plaintiffs, the foreign fishermen who worked on their vessels in New Zealand, are entitled to receive any holidays, holiday pay and statutory holidays, and have denied statutory holiday pay. 31. The crucial question to be determined by the court is if the court determines that the plaintiffs were entitled to holiday pay, including statutory holiday pay, what was the day on which the money for the holiday pay became due and payable? Paragraph 32. The entitlement to holiday pay remained in force until the plaintiffs had taken all the entitlements as paid holidays. The plaintiffs received no holidays at all while working on the Oyang vessels and received no holiday pay at any time to date. Arrears of holiday pay may be pursued in the Employment Relations Authority under Section 131 and Section 161, round brackets 1, round brackets little g, of the Employment Relations Act 2000. Section 161, round brackets 1, of the Employment Relations Act 2000 provides the authority with the exclusive jurisdiction to make determinations about employment relationship problems generally. Section 161, round brackets 1, round brackets G of the Act, further states it has jurisdiction over matters about the recovery of wages or other money pursuant to Section 131, round brackets 1, round brackets A and round brackets B of the Act, and this we say includes holiday pay. 37. Although there is a six-year limitation period on the recovery of arrears of wages and holiday pay pursuant to Section 142 of the Employment Relations Act 2000, subject to any extensions this, course may, this court may grant to the plaintiffs 
which they have applied for under Section 219 of the Employment Relations 2000, an entitlement to holiday pay only becomes due and payable on the employee's last day on the job. In the case of Napier Aero Club versus Taylor, square brackets 1988 1, ERNZ 241, Employment Court, the six year holiday limitation period was abandoned as it was held that the obligation to pay holiday pay as opposed to the obligation to grant holidays on pay only arose when the employment came to an end. In the case of Burns versus Radio Pacific Limit 1998 3ERNZ 559 Employment Court, an employee was successfully able to bring an action for the recovery of holiday pay that had begun to occur more than 13 years before the claim was filed. Both of those cases weren't fishing cases, but the, they're quite famous holiday pay cases that we're going to rely on. This application for payment of holiday pay entitlements is made in reliance on and pursuant to the Holidays Act 2003 and relies on the following cases, Burns vs Radio Pacific Limited and Napier Aero Club vs Taylor. The application for extension is made on the following grounds. One. The plaintiff's apply under Section 219 of the Act, being the Employment Relations Act 2000, for an order seeking and granting an extension for time for the lodgement of the plaintiff's claim if it is outside the time limit for judgment. Section 219 of the Employment Relations Act 2000 permits the court to extend the court's discretion on an application for any person entitled to an extension of time within which a thing may be done the quotation marks, the thing may be done. It's a discretionary power. The court on considering the factors relevant to determining the justice of the case can consider the reason for the delay in bringing the case slash claim in time, the length of the delay, any prejudice or hardship to the other party, the effect on the rights and liabilities of the parties, subsequent events and the merits of the case. The merits of the case are to be assessed at this stage at a reasonably basic threshold on the strength of the case at the stage of the application before the extension is made. The court will need to determine whether the overriding interests of justice lay in the case. So the court will need to determine where the overriding interests of justice lay in this particular case. Given the public interest and relevant public policy principles, of ensuring that minimum pay entitlements, including holiday pay, are paid to vulnerable people like the plaintiffs, which are foreign fishermen who are working in a foreign country of New Zealand on Korean vessels, and the difficulties the, applica the applicants, the plaintiffs had in engaging a solicitor, the court should grant an extension application so that an injustice to the plaintiffs can be avoided and remedied by the court through hearing and determining their substantive claims. The court has material before it on which the discretion can be properly exercised. I'm saying this material is the affidavits filed by the plaintiffs and any other affidavits were filed from expert witnesses. We, we are saying that the delays are excusable and are not personally of the plaintiff's own making due to the unusual circumstances of the case and their personal circumstances, impoverishment and the communication barriers and the difficulty in instructing counsel and then the difficulties of knowing how to proceed and the nature of how other litigation has been going on under Section 256 of the Fisheries Act 1996 that is currently still awaiting for appeal decisions to be made and is generally making slow progress through the New Zealand legal system and which is a confusing process for these plaintiffs. We are saying there is a seriously arguable case or at least an arguable case on the merits. We say the plaintiffs meet the requisite discretionary test to have the court exercise its discretion to grant the extension for lodgement under Section 219 of the Employment Relations Act 2000 and the court should now go on to determine the plaintiff's claims on the merits. If the matter is unable to be heard, the plaintiffs would lose their right to have a significant matter litigated, which we say would not be in the interests of justice and would be contrary to the public interest in ensuring that public uh, 
here and ensure that foreign fishermen who work in New Zealand on New Zealand work permits get paid their minimum wage entitlements and have their claims of exploitation heard and resolved, which we say is in the national interest. And finally, to grant an extension to allow these claims from these fishermen to be heard and determined is consistent, we say, with the international obligations ratified New Zealand to protect migrant workers from exploitation, forced labour and human trafficking. This extension application under Section 219 of the Employment Relations Act 2000 implies, relies on the following cases. 1. Roberts v Commissioner of Police Auckland Employment Court 33 06 27 June 2006 at paragraph 17 to 21. 2. Stevenson v Hyo College Trust Board 2002, number 2 ERNZ 103. Day v Whitcalls Group Limited 1997 ERNZ 541. Jack v Faithful Funeral Services Limited Employment Court Auckland AC 38 06. 10 slash 12 July 2006 Judge Perkins at paragraph 14. Iraqi Correo Grayslander 2000 Resort Limited vs Unworth Auckland AC 50 slash 09 17 December 2009 at paragraphs 10, 20, 22, 23, 24 and 25. Pacific Plastic Recyclers Limited vs Foo 2002 ERNZ F5 at 24. Clare vs Waikato District Health Board 2007 ERNZ 338 Employment Court at paragraph 21. Costley vs Waimea Nurseries Limited 2011 NZ Employment Court 59 at paragraph 16. DVs vs Alleyway CA 205 84 17 December 1987. Scaver vs Blythe 1920, Three Kings Bench 140 at paragraph 143. Claystone Clay Products Limited vs Inspector of Awards 1984, 2NZLR 209 Court of Appeal Case. Wright vs Anderson 1936, New Zealand Law Reports 315 Supreme Court. Rooney Earth Movie Limited vs McTagg 2007 ERNZ 2352 Employment Court. Alice vs Telecom New Zealand Limited 1994 at 1 ERNZ 309 Employment Court. Rika vs Beluka Services Limited 2014 New Zealand ERA Auckland 250. And Pruna vs Environmental Decontamination Services Limited 2012 NZ ERNZ Christchurch 128. And the Waitako District Health Board vs Dent 2015 New Zealand Employment Court 72 at paragraphs 17 and 18. So this was Karen Harding, lawyer, Auckland, New Zealand. Thank you for your attention.